We're with the only police force in the UK routinely armed, routinely wary of officers' faces being filmed. And the only one with a paramilitary crime task force. Stand by, die. Ready to go. Oh, there's the, there's the door going in now. This raid preceded by a mission briefing and the name of a group linked to recent violence in Belfast. Uh, I have to remind you that the current risk is severe, body armour must be worn. This is a C1 proactive operation into the activities of East Belfast UVF. The UVF, Ulster Volunteer Force, is one of Northern Ireland's notorious paramilitary groups. Its East Belfast wing said the police directed some of the violence witnessed last week. In Londonderry, dissident Republicans were blamed for petrol bomb attacks on successive nights of rioting. Paramilitaries, rooted in the sectarian bloodletting of a past 30 year conflict, where loyalist gangs from mostly Protestant neighborhoods traded terror with the IRA and others from largely Catholic areas, killing and injuring thousands. And yet, 20 years on into a peace process they endure, so too their signature brutality. Whoever shot this patient shot him in just above the knee. Brendan Sinnott, in 2018, still deals with the aftermath of so-called paramilitary-style punishment attacks. In this case, a young man shot in both legs above the knee. The bullet has sort of fragmented a bit, as you can see. On impact. The thing, and, uh, on impact, yeah. But what it has done is, in fact, actually shattered the bone. And parts of the fragment, as you can see here, of the bullet itself, you can see little fragments. That's fragments of bone. Fragments of bone, yeah, fragments of bone. What's the general age profile of people coming in with gunshot wounds like this? They tend to be in their sort of teens to sort of mid-twenties. And the, the state they're in when they're, when they're brought in? Well... I mean, they must in, be in excruciating pain. Oh, they're in severe pain, severe pain. And, uh, and then the sort of anguish of having been shot, the psychological sort of trauma associated with that as well. It is a complex, fractured picture. On the one hand, there are the dissident Republican groups still fighting, they say, for a united Ireland, the ones MI5 classify as terrorists. Then, on the other, are the paramilitary groups on both sides who a long time ago announced ceasefires. But the question remains, if their war is over, why are they still around? I think the, the two big motivators are, are greed and power. This is a selection of ammunition that was recovered again from a home. So these are casings, but also live rounds. Thousands are linked to these groups, with a criminal core involved in drugs, prostitution, blackmail and extortion, says the man who heads up the task force. He likens their grip on communities to domestic abuse. It's about psychological control and coercion. And whilst we have seen a massive reduction in violence in Northern Ireland, or a significant reduction in violence, uh, what we've never really dealt with was that coercion and control because they're so deeply embedded into those communities through 30 or 40 years of the conflict here. Many of these individuals became synonymous with their communities and performed roles within that. And what we're really getting into now is unpicking the last pieces of that. Last pieces, like the 62 paramilitary style assaults and 20 shootings recorded in the last year. One not far from this politician's office. Well, they're barbaric. Um, there has never been any justification for people taking the, own, the law into their own hands. Uh, it wasn't right over many years and it's not right now. And the people who are behind this are cowardly thugs. If they really cared about their communities, then they would go away. No sign of that from dissident Republicans who don't accept the peace process. But as for loyalists who do, only a minority they claim are criminals. Earlier this year, the three main loyalist paramilitary groups even staged a press conference, a statement read out on their behalf by a church leader. We reject and repudiate as unacceptable and contrary to loyalist principles 
any criminal action claimed to have been undertaken in our name. On the stage was Jim Wilson. He's spoken in the past on behalf of the paramilitary group, the Red Hand Commando. If you outweigh the stuff that's going on positive in loyalist areas, that outweighs the criminality by mail. But no one wants to talk to us about the good stuff that's going on within loyalist communities. Like the welfare and housing schemes he and other ex-prisoners are now involved in. But even voices like his, fated in some quarters as progressive, aren't yet ready to abandon the paramilitary brand. What is the point of a paramilitary organisation in Northern Ireland not, in 2018? You know, but it's 20 years okay. after the Good Friday. If you want to disseminate the word paramilitary, which means that you're organising and directing terrorism, is that what's happening within loyalism at the minute? They're not paramilitaries if they're working for their communities. So why keep the name Red Hand Commando? Why is it relevant today? Well, it's, it's not relevant in a paramilitary sense. But it's still, you, it's, but the it Red Hand just, Commando still exists. Yes, why, why don't you, you just know, disband it? Well, I'm trying to explain to you. You know, people say, go away. Go away where? You know, leave what? Leave the door open for someone else to come in and, and, and torture and destroy our communities. I'm afraid not. Don't get me wrong. There will be a time when the Red Hand and, and the UVF and the UDA will not exist at all. There will be that time, but that time may not be right at the minute. And we found others who felt the same. In West Belfast one evening, we came across a parade commemorating a UVF loyalist paramilitary, Brian Herbie McCallum. He died 25 years ago when a grenade he was holding detonated by accident. As we approach, ahead a group of men stand by in silence and uniform white shirts and black ties. We're told not to film them, nor the eulogising speech which follows. Be rest assured, volunteers of Herbie's magnitude and their fearless commitment for God and Ulster will be remembered and celebrated perpetually on the Shangle Road and throughout this land which they give their lives defending. Notions of sacrifice, old enemies and street vigilantism can resonate powerfully here. Do you genuinely think in 2018 that groups like the UVF, the UDA, uh, on the Republican side, the INLA, are, are relevant? I mean, what's, what's the point of these groups now? Be, if you have all the organisations on both the Republicans and Loyalists, they have to be there because of each, because of each other. Yes. But, but, but they finish the armed struggle. It never it's, finishes. That's, you know, that's, that's never paper, finished. You, you, work for, you work for Channel 4. You, and yes. you work for Channel 4. You haven't a clue. You're asking me these questions and I'm telling you. The IRA are still trigger happy. And what does a group like the UVF or the UDA mean to a community like this still? The mean, the what, what do you think about the group? Protection. protection and they keep the community right. See, see the groups like the UVF, places around here, any like, people, step out of line, joyride, whatever, do bad things, the UVF will tell them to knock it in the head. On the Republican side, the police believe the IRA's structures are still intact, albeit much reduced, as well as those of another Republican paramilitary group, the INLA, whose political representatives we went to meet. But why don't they just disband? That's what people don't understand. Why is the INLA still in existence? That would be a matter for the INLA to answer that. I wouldn't be as above my pay grade. But we're, we're standing under a poster to Gino Gallagher, Chief of Staff, INLA. Well, if you want to put it like this, the INLA were formed to counter British occupation in Ireland and to fight for a socialist republic. That still hasn't been achieved. So maybe that is the reason why they're still in existence. How long, how long are they here to stay? UVF, UDA, all of these Forever. Groups? Forever. Forever. Back at the search, there are no arrests, but the paramilitary crime task force sees several thousand pounds in cash. The raids continue, but as the recent violence reminds us, 
So too does the malign influence paramilitaries wield within some communities here. Emboldened perhaps by Northern Ireland's dysfunctional politics and not ready to bow out just yet. Far from it.